Globally, it's been said that we can't feed the world's population with organic food. We only can feed them if we use genetically modified no, that's, that's and marketing. chemical. Huh? That's absolute marketing. Is it? Yes, of course it is. Are you absolutely convinced we could feed the world population, or, or would, you, would we be equal to the amount of food, or, or better? Well, it's a complex story. Um, because the, if you like, the metro, the industrial system has such an impact on the environment, I think we've got to change it. It's not going to be sustainable. Um, and that's really a combination of its use of fossil fuels, electricity and water. Those fundamental resources. Um, it's not solar driven. Um, it's not using solar dollars, it's using mineral dollars, non-renewable resources. And for that reason it's a problem and I don't think can be sustained. Um, Do you have, no, have you noticed the impact of genetically modified maize? And Ironically, I think it's going out of fashion fast. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going out of fashion fast. I mean, funny enough, in this country at the moment, there's a shortage of GM maize, and we're importing from Zambia naturally grown maize. It's a, it's a funny anomaly. There's increasing feedback from farmers that they're not really happy with the contracts from the GMO suppliers and their results are not particularly satisfying. I mean, last year, a couple of years ago, I remember the GM lobby boasting about amazing yields, excuse my sarcasm, of six tons per hectare. And that figure in the Zimbabwe era of high productivity was unviable. That was considered a, a poor peasant yield. Um, I mean, if a peasant was getting six tons per hectare, the commercial farmers would not be viable. You know, they weren't viable at those levels. They were using previous techniques before GMO was introduced, were getting above 10 tons. So, I mean, there's an anomaly already. It's just the marketing myths that are being propagated, and it's hard to discern the truth. Um, in terms of productivity, I think because soil is so damaged, we're really facing quite a challenge because to have very high productivity on damaged soils is not easy. And it's going to take time to reverse the trends and the desertification that has taken place. So we're really facing a challenge. But I think food production can happen. I mean, I'm encouraged by the trends in the last 10 years here. There's definitely a great deal more awareness in this Western Cape region on growing food than there was 10 years ago. And there are many more people trying alternatives um, of one form or another. I mean, I tend to think what was said before is, is lots of small-scale producers is probably the way to go, rather than mass industrial systems. Do you eat genetically? Do you do you eat genetically modified or organic food? I try as possible to get uh, organic food. Do you believe that the opposite is bad for you? Yes, I think so. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I want the poop story again. <laughs> yes, tell me the story. Uh, on a farm that I worked is... Uh, um, I had a nursery operation that was adjacent to a domestic situation where the septic tank became a major issue. And it transpired after a while and this there was a great deal of effort to try and do this as naturally as possible and effective microorganisms and various strategies were used to try and block, unblock the drains. But what I noticed is, I mean, it was the most ghastly thing to have to deal with, practically speaking, is we would get upwelling of 
I beg your pardon, Blackwater, and it suddenly came to my attention that there were lumps of millipup or sadza that weren't being broken down by the organisms. And tracing that back, we found that the households were using genetically modified maize and that the microorganisms were not able to digest or convert that material into something that didn't block the drains for a start. Right, so you had coming through a system, through a human gut, through a toilet system, and through a septic tank system, undigested. Now that's quite a frightening uh, implication. You know, if a material passes right through human system, a, a biological system, and looks still like a piece of millipup that you get on the plate, then, then there's a, definitely an issue. Not being recognized as food? No, it's not recognized. You know? Um, if, you know, I mean, maybe that needs an, a, a more astute analysis, but I mean, the implications of that on a metropolitan scale are, are frightening. <laughs> you know? I mean, so what is that? Is you have a million people eating millipup that's not digested and is not digested in the water treatment works, you know, there's a problem. What about the fact that we're using all our water and our soil to grow something that's not even recognized as food? Yeah, it's frightening too. Yeah. I mean, if you, if yeah, you yeah. were to use I our mean, last precious resources, like, I mean, let's imagine we said, well, we haven't got that much left. We've got this whole population. We're trying to take them through. What this, this time, which is until we can renew our soils and improve our water supply, what would you do as regards the way of farming the soil? How would you do it intensely? What, would you, what, what sort of plants would you choose to grow? Oh, you always need a variety of plants. That is essential. I, I'm quite convinced there's not only a delight in diversity, but it's an essential ingredient. Diversity is essential to, for our health of the planet. And that, that is on every level. You know, in terms of people and society, we now live in such a mixed up world that our social, there's a huge social diversity right down to the microbial level where it's essential to have that diversity of microorganisms um, you know to, to rebuild soil and create a healthy environment um, is there any no, water wise more, methods would you yeah, grow? there's a lot of a lot of little tricks that have been developed over years and so on I mean this is why I tend to think on a smaller scale is if people individually and in households are conscious and using every drop of water effectively and recycling it um, a lot of that water can be used to produce food um, yeah definitely you know the trouble is is we're all on a huge mega system which is not efficient 